I mean, you may do it that way, but that's not how the pros do it. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey folks, good to see you again. This is Robert Milton, a sawmill professor. As people started calling me, it beats the heck out of the wood Yoda, seeing as how I don't look like Yoda much. Certainly not green, unless I've eaten some bad fish and then yeah, I'll be green. But I'm not green right now. If you do not know what this thing is, and you're trying to saw for money, or you have a sawmill business, if you have a lumber business, or you're having to buy logs, or you're just trying to get a little more informed, then I don't know what to say. Other than here's a video that I'm gonna do to show you exactly what this thing is. Now, some people may think it's a good uh, anti-burglar device. It would be. It's got a good feel to it. It's really good for whacking snakes. This is a scale stick. This is what you use to estimate how many board feet are in a log before you've actually sawn it. Incredibly important. A lot of folks think you just buy logs and you go, how much is that log worth? And you, well, I don't know. How much you think it's worth? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then y'all pick out a number and you go, cool. Hey, how much is that log worth? I don't know. Me either. Well, then you pick out a number and you go, what about that log? Now, that's not how you do it. I mean, you may do it that way, but that's not how the pros do it. The pros use a scale stick. It's This one is based on what's called the Doyle, D-O-Y-L-E. It's the most common in this North Alabama, Tennessee region for measuring hardwoods. There's various other scales, lumber and log scales. You can go on the Google and check them out. One's called a Scribner. There's another one called the International. But basically what you do is you hook the end of the scale on the small end diameter of a log. You hold it against it, the end of the log, and then you'll measure, you probably can't see this, but I'll zoom up on it, I'll, I don't know. So then it'll show you the diameter and then right down here, it'll show you, can you see that? Probably can't, how many board feet are in the log. And since logs and lumber are sold on board foot, unless you're in softwood, typically that's sold by the ton. <sighs> There's always another phone call. And this one's a spammer. Which I love spam. If I could eat spam, I'd even get more fat. Then you can multiply the board foot price of the species green by the board footage that the Doyle scale or Scribner or international scale predicts that will be in your log. You multiply that out and that's the price of the log. So for example, say you scaled one log, let's just pick a number here. Um, it was eight feet long, 18 inches in diameter, small end, not the large end. You always cut the large end off because nobody wants a board that's only half a board. You gotta have boards that go the full length of the board, so therefore anything above the small end gets cut off. It's kind of painful when you got a log with a great big bell on it, but you know, that's the way it is. So if you got an 18 inch log, uh, eight foot diameter according to the Doyle scale here. You're about 98 board feet in that log when you get done sawing it. Say that log's worth a dollar a board foot green, that'd be a $98 log. It's that simple. It turns guessing about log prices into professionally knowing the log prices. Does that make sense? I hope so, because that's how it's done. So go get you one of these guys. But you can go on Amazon and just type in Doyle scale, D-O-Y-L-E scale. A bunch of them will come up. Some are cute little fold-ups. Um, some are big dogs like this. I kind of like this one. In case you're interested, this one is made by Logrite, L-O-G-R-I-T-E. No, I am not sponsored by Logrite. But 
if I thought there was a better one out there, I'd be using it. There isn't. Give them a call if you want to. <laughs> Tell them I sent you. Heck, ring the daggum phone off the hook just to aggravate them. Anyway, you get your scale stick, go up to a pile of logs, and let's measure some. Now, logs are, hardwood logs are mentally visualized into having four faces, four sides. Think of a rectangle. There's four faces on a rectangle. They may not all be the same size, but you have to visualize it. So as you're looking at a log, the log is graded by how many clear surfaces or faces there are on that log. For example, a garbage log, and so I'm a little too technically inaccurate, a crap log <laughs> will have defects on all four faces. There goes a chipmunk. I guess he got tired of listening to me. We'll have defects in all four faces. That means that every single board you take off that log on any face will have defects. So there's no way you can get really high grade lumber from a low grade log. On the other side of the spectrum, um, there are logs that have four clear faces. Each face of the log, if it was sawn or it was a rectangle or a cant, <clears throat> would have zero knots, zero defects. Now we're talking about knots, we're talking about defects, cat faces, rips, lightning strikes, anything. A four clear face log is typically sold as veneer because it has zero defects and when they peel that log or shave that log into strips, that veneer will come off with zero defects. So generally a four clear face log is veneer. Then you have a three clear face and a two clear face. <clears throat> and then you have no clear faces, kind of like a teenage in high school. If you're tired of hearing the word clear face, it's actually called CF in the industry. So a veneer grade log is a four CF. A three CF is three clear faces, one defect or defects on one face. <clears throat> That's called a near veneer. So if you have four clear faces on a veneer grade log, it means if you're gonna saw it into lumber, you can get perfectly clear boards from all four sides of the cant and you can saw the cant the way you want to minimize stress and to maximize quality. If you have a three CF log, that means you're gonna have two clear faces that are opposite, one either top or bottom, and you can start taking your boards in until you get to a certain point and then you gotta to go to the other clear face. But what that's telling you then, you're gonna be somewhat constrained on how, on how you saw a log. Another very important tool you should have is <clears throat> this guy. There's a lot of technical terms for it. It's called a measuring stick. Um, it needs to be the right length. You can use tape measures all you want, but sooner or later, you want to use a measuring stick. Just cut the thing the way you want it. I like my walnut logs. When I tell my loggers or ask my loggers to bring me walnut logs, it's always going to be eight foot plus trim, sometimes nine. Typically, the reason they do that is when they're felling logs, they're going to do various cuts to bring it to the ground and it's going to leave one end not real pretty. This log is a butt log. How do you know? Because you can see the cuts that are used to make the, open, the bird's mouth and the back cuts on the log. You can see this is called butt swell right here. And this is why you want to buy your logs just a little bit over simply because you really don't want to deal with this. You want to be able to just trim this off with your chainsaw. If you look at this log, you notice when I put my eight foot six inch measuring stick um, available at Hobby Hardwood Inc. Um, I can sell this piece of wood to you for $300. And I'll even write my name. I'm not gonna do that. Just cut your own piece of wood. <laughs> so anyway, put this stick on the log. I've got a little room for end trim here, which is what I wanna do because I've got 
some obvious issues right here no big deal i got my mark on it when the loggers cut logs for me they will typically put a, a little spray paint on it to know that's me that way when it's getting sorted out they know those are mine if you look down the length of the log you'll see how long it is this one's cut just about perfect for me i've got a couple of inches of end trim on either side it lets me make my adjustments so i can pull this way just a little bit this is really the kind of logs i like to get let's scale this lo oh, shit drop my stick so this is actually a good one to show you how to scale remember what i said you always pick the uh, narrow diameter on the small end of the log right so if you're scaling and then you're trying to sell the log <laughs> which is kind of this is why you need a scale stick you would say you would hook one end right there come down here find the widest point say this guy's 25 inches wide and then when you come to 25 inches then it's eight feet right there so this is you go this line is eight foot this line is 10 foot this line is a 12 foot long log so 25 inch diameter small end of the log uh, eight foot this log would be projected to have or predicted to have 220 board foot so say this walnut log was five dollars a board foot that means this log would cost over a thousand dollars that's if you're trying to sell it now if you're trying to buy it you'd go no it's not how you measure a log i watched it on hobby hardwood you measure from the small diameter on the small end because everything else gets cut away and that's just how you do it so let's look at it again this is the small diameter hook it on the bark spin it around and if you're looking right here, you kind of wave it and it looks like 18 inches. Can you see that? Can you see that? 18 inches. So now if you look at the eight foot line, it's 98 board foot. So predicted yield is roughly half depending on how you measure it at five dollars a board foot this log went from a thousand dollar log to a five hundred dollar log if you have an unscrupulous seller he's going to want you to pay a grand for this log if you know what you're doing you're going to say no i'm going to pay five hundred dollars for this log now it's not a five dollar walnut log but it's easy math so i can round it up although there are quite a few walnut logs out there that are five dollars a board foot and even more that's the importance of measuring from the small end diameter on the narrow side so now imagine you had just bought your scale stick and you hadn't watched my video then you would measure from the widest point to the widest point and i hear this all the time in this case the widest point to the widest point would arguably be right here 27 inches that comes up to 264 depending on how you measure the log the log i've just shown you could be uh, 264 predicted board foot which is not how you measure a log and that comes out to let me do the math um 1320 dollars a log this log wrong then if you measure on the the uh, large diameter of the small end, right? Remember that one? That yielded 200 board foot at $5 a board foot. The log went from $1,320 to $1,000. Again, that's wrong. And then the real price was 100 board feet. And the log is really worth $500. That's how much this little guy can save you money please comment like subscribe all that kind of good stuff i do appreciate that get you a scale stick and have some fun sawmilling and we will see y'all next week
Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.